Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are blessed. And I hope you are living your best life free. And what do I mean by that? Well, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so what we want to do is live in the freedom that the Lord has set for us. And um, I'm so glad to have you back here on my channel. Uh, today, I am moved to uh, give a message uh, from the Lord. And I want to share with you uh, some of the things that are going on with me uh, as far as um, how I'm doing. I'm doing well. And uh, yeah, I am living blessed and living my best life free in the Lord. And the Lord, meaning the Most High God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. And so I just want to be able to uh, share some words of encouragement today. And I am still on the subject of stay focused. Uh, stay focused on the Lord and what the Lord has set for you to do. Don't be distracted by the naysayers. Don't be distracted by the enemy. He is so busy trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to work on the children of God and work on the children of God. And let me tell you something. If you've been going through, I know I have. If you've been going through, that's because you're on the right track. Because the Lord has blessings in store for you, even in these last days. So I want to share the good news with you. So stay tuned. We are going to get into it. y'all, Jewels by Laban is my online store. There you'll find fashionable, trendy jewelry at prices you can afford. Now, I don't want you to head over there right away, but after you're done watching your YouTube videos, go check it out and see what you can find. I have jewelry and accessories at prices comparable to Amazon. Fun, chic, trendy, and classic jewelry and accessories. One thing I know for sure, you don't have to pay a lot of money to accessorize but you can mix it up a bit with some of your high fashion items. Your support will also contribute to minority female entrepreneurship. And anything you purchase on that website will be put to good use. It will help support this YouTube channel and other volunteer projects I'm working on. Now don't go over there right away. Finish watching your YouTube videos, then head on over to Jewels by Levon. <laughs> Thanks y'all and God bless. So I have just been resting over the weekend and um, I'll tell you, I really want to stay on the subject of stay focused and encourage all of you uh, because these are the last days and I'm just going to share what I notice, what the enemy is doing with me. Uh, whenever I start out to do something where I know the Lord is going to make a difference and a change uh, in someone's life and use me in doing it, uh, the enemy comes in to try to, the enemy always comes in to try to discourage me. And I know many of you are feeling the same way. Uh, you may be challenged in certain areas or you may be trying to set out to achieve a certain goal. Um, maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe it has something to do with what you're doing in the workplace. Um, maybe it's a transition that is taking place in your life. What the enemy always wants to do is discourage us. And who us, who I mean by us, is the children of the Most High God. 
those who are believers in Jesus Christ being the Savior and Lord and the Son of God. The enemy knows his time is short, and so he's going to do everything that he can to attack the body of Christ. So what I mean by the end times uh, and that the time is short for the enemy uh, many of us who are Christian understand that uh, Satan has been given a certain time to reign on this earth. And we, as children of God, uh, the body of Christ, uh, those who love and serve Jesus as Lord and know that he is the Son of God, we're here to make a decision. We're here to choose whom we're going to serve. Uh, we are here to uh, determine uh, whether we want to serve uh, the Lord or whether we want to serve Satan. And, and I always say there's no in between. And so Satan's job, because he's so mad that he no longer can have his say so in heaven because of what he did. He was casted down. Him and his angels, a third of the angels, they say, was cast down from heaven along with Satan uh, because uh, Satan wanted to set himself up to be Christ. That's why we call him and all of those who uh, preach against Jesus Christ, uh, the Antichrist. And the scriptures tell us that there are many antichrists, uh, but also in the last days, we point to a single antichrist that will be here as well. Um, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the spirit of the antichrist and the antichrist uh, movement of which Satan is the one that is leading. And so the reason you are going through what you are going through in this day and time is because of him. It is because his time is short and he wants to pull everyone that he can to the pits of hell along with him. Uh, that's his destiny. His destiny is to burn in hell forever. And these sound like some very, this sounds like some, uh, some really um, mythical, uh, stories that Christian tell, uh, but we are getting our information from not only for me, not only the Bible, but a lot of the lost books of the Bible, uh, the Apocrypha, a lot of the books that were taken out of the Bible, the canonical, um, out of the canon, which is the Bible that we tend to read in, in the church. A lot of books were taken out of the Bible, and a lot of those books also uh, bear witness to uh, Jesus Christ and Satan and what he, his attempt is to do here on this earth, which is to pull as many people as he can to uh, everlasting hellfire. And it sounds very tragic. It sounds very horrible. Uh, so many people who do not, who used to serve God, no longer serve God, and some people who just can't even get with the message of Jesus Christ, they can't understand how a God could allow anyone to burn in hell. What what is that? Well, hell wasn't designed for man. Hell was designed for Satan and his kingdom. And what's so bad about it is that. Satan and God, <laughs> of course, knows that there are certain people who just won't believe in God, in our creator, of the creator. God loves us and he wants us to live a good life. He wants us to live a blessed life and he wants us to choose him and choose his word and choose what he has set for us to do. And what he sets for us to do is not always our decision. It's not always what we want to do. It's not always what we want to do. And so the Lord loved us 
God our Father loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem mankind. Uh, we needed redemption uh, based on what happened back in Genesis when we fell, when Adam and Eve took on the uh, forbidden fruit that the Lord uh, commanded them not to take. Uh, in my opinion, I believe that forbidden fruit is knowledge. Uh, it is the knowledge of things that we as children of God don't need to know. And what we have seen in life is that knowledge has taken man to a level of wanting to be God. Instead of being a follower of God, what knowledge does, it gives you the feeling of, well, I don't need God. And so we see a lot of that in this day and age. But I'm going to get into that later, if I can remember. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say is that hellfire is not designed for man. It is, in the scriptures read that, um, it is for Satan and his kingdom. And yet, we are given a choice as to whom we're going to serve. Uh, the scriptures read, choose whom ye will serve. So, uh, so, so hell is not designed for man. It was designed for Satan. And since day one, uh, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, uh, Satan, of course, came to Eve with uh, the notion that, sh that she should partake in uh, the forbidden fruit. If you read in Genesis, it talks about how uh, the, the forbidden fruit of that tree was the knowledge of good and evil. And so I believe and there are many that have researched and uh, followed uh, this study that it has been the pursuit of Satan to get his followers, not just the fallen angels, but man, to take on this agenda that he has to disprove God and outthink God and out-create God. Uh, now, Satan knows that God is. He's been casted out of heaven <laughs> by God. He already knows that God exists. But the way he wants to play this game out is to use man, use us. Uh, he uses us like guinea pigs. And he has so many of those serving him unwittingly. They believe they're doing good for themselves and for their families and for the world to come and that kind of thing. And so what he does is allow them a lot of riches, a lot of um, wealth and power. Now, I'm not talking about those of us mere uh, folk who work nine to five jobs or who own our businesses and who are, you know, living and thriving to live a better life. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about those who are in power, who have an influence in making uh, the laws and making changes and things in this life. That will affect you, those who have a lot of influence. And so I'm not talking about you and me. <laughs> you know, we're, they're not sitting here on YouTube or on this platform. Uh, they are out busy doing things. Uh, they are in secret societies, fraternities, and sororities, making plans along with the enemy to overtake the world. And they don't understand that the enemy is using them to do what? To pull as many folk as he can to the bottomless pit, to the pits of hell, where he will be the lake of fire, to hell, to Hades. And what's so sad is that we have common folk like you and me who they call themselves Satanists and um, witches and warlocks and folk like that who 
dabble in the occult and they feel like they're doing something, you know, just spiritual and, you know, just really on their own path. And uh, many feel they're doing something good. Uh, many feel that Satan is good. Um, they feel that, you know, in order to, uh, you know, I guess balance the spirituality uh, in their lives, they'll choose instead of God, they'll choose Satan. And those folk who are doing the agenda of Satan, whether they're of the elite, the high power powered individuals, uh, or those who are the common folk who are, you know, thinking that they're just doing a trend of spirituality and uh, really feel focused on dabbling in the occult because they feel like it's just something that they're empowered to do. They feel good doing it. Um, they're getting a lot from it because what the enemy is going to do is use these folk to carry out his agenda. And his only agenda is to pull people to hell uh, in the last day because there is going to be a last day. There is going to be a reckoning. And we don't know when that is. It could be tomorrow. It can be today. It can be 10,000 years from now. It can be 10 years, 20 years. We don't know the hour or the day when the Lord is coming back. But what we do know is that he is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to judge this world. So he uses folk uh, that have a lot of influence and he uses common folk to carry out this agenda and, and he wants those who are in power to carry out the agenda because they have a lot of influence and they're able to uh, make laws and rules and create a society that is a society that is uh, sinful in nature and that is designed to keep people from following Jesus Christ as being the Lord. And he uses the common folk day to day. Uh, with witchcraft and, uh, like I said, all kinds of things dabbling in the occult so that they can feel that they are gaining some kind of power and authority um, by using this knowledge. And so he gives them all knowledge through science, through technology, through the occult, uh, there are witches and warlocks that can do some very amazing things. You'd be surprised at some of the things that they are able and capable of doing in order to uh, carry out the agenda of Satan. And so it's not anything to play with. It's real. Satan in his kingdom is real. But what I appreciate is that God and his kingdom is even more real. my cat. <laughs> she wants the attention while I get on this camera. Uh, they all do, but it's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so he's using mankind to carry out this agenda with this thing about knowledge. And so those who are dabbling in the occult uh, they feel like they're gaining some uh, superpowers by this uh, knowledge. And it's nothing that nothing more than just witchcraft. He uses folk in entertainment who have, uh, you know, various gifts, uh, you know, and prowess to be able to navigate in the entertainment world. You are listening to the opening phrases of Camille Saint-Jean's Danse Macabre, or The Dance of Death. Based upon a late medieval moral allegory on the universal nature of mortality, this tone poem paints a picture of death summoning spirits to remind humanity just how frail we truly are. The Danse Macabre begins with the violinist violently sawing out an A and E flat, which form the interval of a tritone, an interval that we know today by its Latin moniker, Diabolos in Musica, or The Devil in Music. This is the same interval that opens Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, a similar raw and aggressive invocation to the spirits. 
The tritone, also known as the diminished fifth or the augmented fourth, is named as such because it spans three whole tone intervals, or tritone. It neatly divides the octave into two equal parts, but it's an unstable sound. The tritone is an important engine of the cycle of tension and release, fundamental to our system of tonal harmony. Because of how dissonant it is, it sets up expectations of resolution. But what if that resolution never came? The phrase diabolos in musica seems to harken back to the Middle Ages, before the development of our system of tonal harmony. Because of how dissonant and unresolved the tritone was, church officials were afraid that if monks were to sing it, the devil himself would appear. It was explicitly banned, and anyone who dared to sing it was sent, sent, sentenced. Wait a second. Play that background music again. That's a tritone that those monks are singing. How can that be? I mean, are you sure that they're singing that right? Because I've always heard that the tritone was banned in the Middle Ages because it was the devil in music. Just listen to Alex Webster of Cannibal Corpse explain it. Tritone, that's the devil's note. Like in the old days, you weren't allowed to use that note. The tritone was not banned in the Middle Ages. There simply is no evidence to suggest that it ever was. This is true despite the fact that that bit of misinformation is repeated over and over on the internet. Two notes that was banned by the Catholic Church. Tritone was banned by the Catholic Church. According to scholars, it was at one point outlawed. This specific interval was banned. Well, the devil's interval and was banned in some cases. I got a lot to say and a little time to say it in. <laughs> but anyway, this music had young people basically just killing themselves and worshiping the devil and just basically calling the devil's name out. We were even in high school, kids would come to school with the satanic Bible and this music would have all kinds of vicious pictures and graphic pictures on the CD covers and all this and I mean it was just a mess. I remember watching, a, and my mom had it on videotape, we watched a, a special on 2020 about the effects of heavy metal music, how it was causing people to kill and all this. So even the country acknowledged this big move of the enemy. Holy Spirit came to me a little, little while after that and said, uh, you know, spoke to me and said, Craig, you know, this is not pleasing to the devil. I said, what do you, you know, what do you mean, Lord? He said, the devil is not satisfied with this because, and he didn't really say it like this, but I'm going to say it so y'all can understand it. The brothers ain't down with heavy metal. Black folk ain't liking that. Am I right? The majority don't, don't, don't like that heavy metal. You know, in concert, they batting, biting bats' heads off on the stage. Now, you know brothers ain't finna fool with no bat. To us, that's a flying rat. A, a wing rat, we, and we, can have our, we done had our days with rats, we ain't, uh-uh. Pay money in the concert, we can rat, some of them got them free at the house. Finna fool with no bat. You know, all that jumping off the stage and getting caught by the audience. Now, you know, you don't trust nobody like that. So, you know, we just wasn't going to get with the heavy metal. But God began to tell me something that, and I could tell even by the way the Lord, the Lord began to put it in me. And I mean, when he put it in me, y'all, and one thing you got to understand about a calling from God and all I, I mean, this whole thing, and I was telling uh, uh, Minister Herman that it's it just, it's so in me until it just, when I see something about hip hop or different things, it just, oh, it, just, it just disturbs me because he actually just opened me up and put it in me, how he feels about what's going on. And I feel it. But he began to tell me that there was something coming that was getting ready to rock this nation. It's going to be worse than a bomb, but it was going to create a bunch of young people that were going to totally defy order. Churches would begin to embrace it and the whole world would be rocked by the impact of it. And what the enemy was getting ready to do was something that he had been planning way back in Pharaoh's day. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. And way back in the Zulu nation and in Africa, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that a little later. But he began to prepare something to catch and captivate the minds of America and pull them straight into his own belly. And that form of music that he was forming was what we know as the hip-hop culture. 
And at the time, it seemed a little unbelievable because God began to tell me how the black youth would begin to actually worship the devil. How church youth, church youth would actually worship the devil. How grown church folks would actually begin to worship the devil. And so he'll use music and folk in the music industry to create songs and things of that nature. You see these genius musicians, uh, you know, across all genres, uh, these genius uh, musicians, and he gives them this ability, this knowledge, uh, this capability of being able to do certain things. God gives them the gift, but Satan will take that gift that God gives and pervert it. And so that's why you hear in the music industry a lot of things that are, you know, promoting sin and promoting a sin nature. Uh, he uses the media. So a lot of things that you watch on the media, um, it's geared towards sin nature, this Gnostic way of being. Uh, and what I mean by Gnosticism, meaning it's all upside down. Right is wrong and wrong is right. <laughs> and uh, then he uses those who are in power that have a lot of influence. And uh, those he uses to create different laws and different things are passed so that this sin nature can be carried out. Uh, this Gnosticism, wrong is right and right is wrong. I remember when uh, the cable uh, channels like HBO, Showtime, all these different channels, uh, you know, when they first came out with these different series, I believe that was in the 90s, the early 2000s, you had things like Sex in the City, um, The Sopranos, uh, The Wire. I, I mean, it was a whole bunch of different series. Now you have a ton of different series. There are so many different series that are out now. You know, you can have your pick and choice of them. But when they first came out, um, you know, I used, I used to watch them. I was younger and uh, uh, didn't know what I know now today. Um, but I would engage in a lot of those uh, series. And what we were doing without our knowledge was rooting for the bad guys. If you think of Tony Soprano, Tony Soprano was the head of a, a mafia family. <laughs> and for but the way they produced it, they made you like Tony Soprano. So even though he was killing and stealing and doing a bunch of stuff that was something that you wouldn't do. And then some of us were thinking, well, you know, he's living large. I want to live like him. <laughs> so maybe I'll go out and do something like what he's doing. You know, some that influenced a lot of people to do a lot of bad uh, because they saw that there was a benefit to it. Um, but do you see how subtly uh, it was? It, it, and, and it's very evident today. I mean, well, it's not evident to those who don't pay attention, but to those of us who know the agenda of Satan is very evident that he will take these different characters who are sinful in nature and get you to root them on. I used to listen to a lot of hip hop. I used to listen to gangster rap, all of that. And didn't really pay attention to uh, what I was listening to and what I was bringing into my soul. The words, because he uses the grooves and the beats to get into your your soul. You know, we as um, Americans, we love music and we love how the music makes us feel. And so as long as, you know, Satan, you know, well, Satan was the... Wasn't Satan over music in, in the heaven? Um, he was made of, 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 of music, wasn't he? Uh, his very nature was that of music. He was the head of worship, uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so you know he's really good with music. And so he, music is going to be his 
main thing. And music is very seductive. It is a form, I believe, of how uh, witchcraft can be used through music, through seducing, and a subtle manner of introducing sin, lust. Uh, a lot of music is based out of uh, all kinds of things. Um, some of the musicians will tell you that they will uh, do their um, uh, drugs and things of that nature. And then after they do that, they will go into the studio and will uh, produce some of the most phenomenal music you've ever heard. And a lot of those drugs and things of that nature, that too is a way that Satan uses these types of substances and things in order to get into your soul, get into your psyche. A lot of artists use drugs, whether you know it or not. A lot of the best music that, or a lot of the best inventions or creations of the world have been made while the creator was on drugs. And this is a fact. Stephen King, one of the greatest writers in the world, but he used to use a huge cocktail of drugs to, to become one of the greatest writers in the world. Well, most people just use a couple drugs. King used to use cocaine, Xanax, Valium, NyQuil, beer, tobacco, weed, just to get him through the day. He's known to say that he doesn't even remember writing some of his books because he was so fucked up off the drugs. Little Wayne is always rapped about being a drug addict. He's known to drink lean promethazine syrup until he has seizures. Pimp C. He's known to have died because of the lean, because of that purple drink, that promethazine cough syrup that the is so popular now in the hip hop culture. Kurt Cobain, heroin addict, shot himself in the head from depression. But who knows why? Edgar Allan Poe, alcoholic. Ernest Hemingway, alcoholic. Charles Dickens, when he wasn't writing Christmas carols, he was smoking opium. Drug use in art has long been associated. I hear about this kid, Little Peep, dying of a, of a Xanax overdose. He just came out this year with his music and came out with his videos and he was blowing up. He had all the tattoos on his face, white rapper. It was marketable. He was rapping about being sad and drugs and the shit that he rapped about, it happened in his life. He died from doing drugs. And calls you to do things that he wants you to do. Drugs is a number one way. Marijuana, um, no matter what a drug you are using, it is a way to numb the mind, calm the mind, so that Satan can have an open uh area to be able to come in and suggest to you all kinds of things. And so when you're under the influence of these substances, uh, your character changes and you wonder why you're acting a certain way or so frustrated or so angry or being a certain way. Um, this is the way Satan uses uh, these types of substances and things so that he can cause you and the number one thing he wants is for you to have a sin nature. And why? So that he can drag you to hell. So the scriptures read in Joshua 24 and 15, and if it seem evil unto you to and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, as we see in Joshua, Joshua was talking to the house of God, the children of Israel, and he was instructing them, um, just as I was mentioning prior, that the purpose for us uh, as we are here on this earth is to choose whom we are going to serve, uh, whether it be the Lord or evil. And uh, as Joshua puts it, are you going to serve the gods that were before the flood or the gods of the Amorites? Meaning at that particular time, uh, these the children of Israel are still serving other gods even after the flood. 
they were still serving other gods even after the flood and which was the reason the Lord uh, destroyed uh, the world in the flood uh, was because of man's serving other gods. There was only one household left and that was the household of Noah. Uh, they, were, they were the only ones that were serving the Most High. Everybody else had turned to sin. And so this is to me what is happening in this day and age. Uh, it's starting to be uh, reversed where doing evil and sinning and all of that seems to be the norm. And when you are serving the Lord, you seem to be the oddball. Uh, people will even mock you, uh, you know, and will make you look like, well, you're serving um, this thing that's not even real or this, that, and the other. But yet they want you to believe what they are doing is real. And it takes faith for whatever it is you're, you're following. If you're a witch or a warlock, it takes faith for you to believe the devil that you're serving. If you're into science and all of that knowledge-based stuff that you feel is uh, making you superior to God because you know this. <laughs> and a lot of people call it controversy. A lot of people call it, you know, you are just, you know, diving into stuff that you don't know is real or not. Well, it's the same with anything that we've learned. Anything that we have been given, we receive it by faith, no matter what it is you've learned, because nobody... Uh, existed back in the day. <laughs> and so, you know, these books that we read and these this information that is given to us, uh, we have to accept it by faith as being truth. Uh, so it's no different than those of us who accept the Bible and accept what the Word of God says as being true. Uh, and so a lot of us don't want to talk about that because we want to live in a um, a bubble where we're just, you know, living this life and everything is going nice and happy and all that kind of stuff. And that's good. We, we want to achieve that. But there is also the seriousness of where we are going to dwell in eternity. And so when we take our last breath, we're going to be faced with that decision. Um, we're going to be faced with the, that destiny, that outcome, that choice that we made here on this earth. And we can only choose either God or Satan. And so it's been Satan's agenda since day one. That's the whole point of him influencing Eve in order to get her to influence Adam to take on the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what I believe that that knowledge of good and evil is, is Anything that Satan is influencing you to do that will cause you to not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God is the Creator and that He has promised everlasting life for those of us who believe in Him. And so you will think, well, you know, back in the days of Adam and Eve, Jesus wasn't there then. <laughs> well, Jesus has always been. Jesus has always been. He wasn't in the form of the name Jesus, uh, but he, as the Son of God, has always been before we existed, before earth was exist in existence. What we believe is Jesus was the Word. And when Jesus manifested himself through Mary and came to this world as a man and not just spirit, he became the name Jesus. There is going to be a time when he comes back and the scriptures read that there's going to be, his, there's going to be name is, uh, I forget, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in the scripture. I'll show you that. If we look at John... Uh, the first chapter, John is describing Jesus. I'm not going to read the whole scripture or the whole chapter, but I want you guys to go and read that and you'll see what I'm referring to. But I'm going to read at the beginning, so I don't want you to think that I'm just reading um, uh, this just to try to prove a point. If you read the whole chapter, you'll see that uh, John was referring to uh, Jesus here. 
Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, so let me read John 8 and 48. Let's go back to 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Now this is Jesus talking to the uh, Sadducees and Pharisees. And, he, um, and so the Jews respond, then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say, that he is your God. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art, thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. So in Revelation 19, I'm going to start at 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. The children of Israel lost their way. A lot of things were taking place, wars. Uh, if you read the book of Maccabees and some of the other books of the Apocrypha, uh, they share, uh, especially, um, they, they share some of the things that were taking place prior to when uh, Jesus uh, came, uh, you know. And so you were wondering, you would wonder why Jesus was so adamant about uh, coming against the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There was a reason for that. Uh, the Sanhedrin was infiltrated by those who were not true followers of Christ. That's why Jesus called them brood of vipers. He said that they were not from their, the, their father, they weren't from Abraham, but they were from their father, the devil. Uh, he said that specifically to uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees because uh, of the history. What had taken place was those that were in charge of the Sanhedrin, it was infiltrated. And of course, that was devised by Satan himself. When we see man acting out in evil and perpetrating the evils of the world and the land, evil kings, evil this, evil that, they're following Satan. There's no other evil but Satan. Satan is the root of all evil. Uh, he is the origin of all evil. So any agenda, anything that is has a sinister evil toward it, it is Satan. And so during these times between the Old Testament and the New Testament, a lot of things were taking place. And so uh, that's why we see the climate of the Roman Empire and um, the children of Israel, uh, what was going on in the times of Jesus. So ever since I have really been focusing on following um, the Lord, uh, not in an inauthentic manner, in a way where I am uh, being one way in front of folk and then behind folks back, uh, sinning and doing my own thing and then calling myself Christian. Uh, ever since I stopped doing that and started getting on the path of following Jesus Christ and um, really reading the scriptures and learning about the history of who I am, who we are as children of God, I have been 
dealing with nothing but trials and tribulations. And the way I handle that is through prayer. Prayer is the answer. Uh, what's happening is that Satan is really adamant about keeping us from falling on our knees and praying to the Most High God. So he'll use anything. He'll use anything. I just went over like the history of how he uses, um, you know, serving other gods and how he in history, how he used um, the children of Israel to, you know, follow other um, nations and following what they were doing and serving other gods. Um, what we are always as spiritual beings, we're always looking for something. Um, and as Christians uh, in this day and age, we are the same way as the way the children of Israel were. We are always looking for something else. We're not content with serving God. We're not content with serving Jesus Christ as him being our Lord and Savior. We want something different. The children of Israel didn't just, wouldn't, they didn't want to just follow God. They wanted a king. They wanted to be the way other nations were. And so in this day and age, we're the same way. We want something extra. We want something, we're not just content with following Christ. And so we have a lot of people looking to other gods, looking to other religions, looking to other forms of spirituality. They think they're doing something to heighten their spirituality. They feel like they're doing something better uh, to improve who they are. And they're not satisfied with the scriptures. Why? Because it seems boring. You know, I can't party. I can't do what I want to do. I can't live the way I want to live because Christianity calls us to be disciplined. It calls us, us to forgive and to love and not to hold grudges and not to get uh, in animosity and not to be lustful and not to be greedy and not to be addictive, and not to indulge in the things of this world, not to be, you know, uh, moved by just how we feel. Christianity causes us to follow Christ and follow what his word tells us to do. So I hope I was able to share some words of encouragement uh, to you. I hope I was able to give you some value today and inspire you to stay focused, to stay on that path. Don't let any of these distractions that the enemy plants uh, in your life to try to get you off your path. You stay on that path uh, if you are feeling um, a problem with getting motivated, hey, get on your knees and pray. Tell the Lord, I need direction. I am trying to resolve these issues. I am in a dilemma and I'm not really sure which direction to go. Lord, help me. He will help you. He will help you. He will put you on that pathway that you need to go. You know why? Because you put your trust and faith in him. Read the book of Psalms. Read David. David was a king. Uh, David started as a young boy and grew into a man, a king. And God said he was a man after his own heart. Now, if you see David in his youth and in his youthful years, he was full of sin, full of lust. He loved women, you know, and he still he did things, some very unspeakable things. But God still called him a man after his own heart. David grew into his relationship with God uh, to the point where he wrote the book of Psalm and he shared with the Lord Jesus Christ that we call him today, but was the son of God back then. He shared with him his heart. Uh, he was battling with Saul, seeking after to kill David, and he was in a lot of sorrow and a lot of torment emotional torment because David had a really good heart. He had a good heart to do good, but he was being sought after because of Saul's jealousy and uh, enmity toward him. And so David uh, would always call on the Most High God. And when you read a lot of the Psalms, they start off with his feeling distressed and why, O oh Lord, 
uh, you know, am I in this situation? But then if you get further into the chapter, he'll turn it around and say, but you, Lord, I will seek. You are my, 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 my buckler. You are my uh, strength. You are my everything. He would start worshiping God. So not only should you pray, but get in a place where you start worshiping God. God loves that. He wants us to come to him and make him our only source. And when we start doing that, he is going to make ways out of no ways for our behalf. He will start doing those heroic, supernatural things that he did for the children of Israel when they were fighting in battles. Just supernatural things. He will step in for you. You don't have to depend on yourself. You don't have to depend on your intellect. You don't have to depend on your ability. You're not too old. You're not too young. You're not too this. You're not too that. You are just right for the Lord to use you so that he can get the glory and praise. And don't forget to do that. Once the Lord answers your prayers and gives you the desires of your heart, don't forget to thank him. Don't forget to praise him and always seek after and worship him. And you will have a continual life, a relationship with the Most High God of him stepping in on your behalf and making the impossible possible. So I, again, hope I shared some words of inspiration to you. Uh, I want you to uh, have a good day. I am going to... <laughs> I am going to finish off my uh, veg my uh, avocado toast, and I'm going to share that with you guys um, in another video. Uh, I'll share it with you. Um, my health journey. I'm on a health journey now, and um, I'll share a little bit with that with you on the next video. So I thank you for stopping by. See you next time, and God bless.